Good morning, boys and girls. I hope everybody's having a good Sunday morning so far. And Miss Jan and I sure do miss seeing y'all in person. And we hope everybody's doing okay. And um, for now, as Sunday school is going to be a little different for a little while, hopefully we'll be back in at church and together before too long. But since we're having to be away, we're going to start trying to do something a little different and just kind of have Sunday school each week and just talk about our lesson and see how um, everybody can do with that till we can get back together. So I hope everyone's doing good and I hope uh, you're all okay. And I'm going to open us right now in a word of prayer before we get started on our lesson today. So bow your heads. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord, we pray for all of those people who are working in the hospitals and the doctor's offices and EMS and all those that are out and about and helping with everything that's going on right now. Lord, we pray for their safety. God, we would just pray that you would be with them and watch over them and protect them and their families. God, we pray that you would be with our pastors and everyone out there now who's um, having to find the different ways to lead their church. And God, we just ask right now that you would be with us and open our hearts and our minds. And Lord, um, be with us today as we talk about your word and that everything we'd say would honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So today's lesson is going to have, a, have to do with Jesus and how he went about picking his disciples. Uh, but before we get into that, we're going to start off with our big picture question right now. And if y'all remember, we would have a big picture question that would last for a few weeks. And this big picture question that we're on right now is why did Jesus become human? Okay, why did Jesus become human? And the answer to that is Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners. All right, Jesus became human to obey his father's plan and to rescue sinners. And if you remember, you know, Jesus is the Son of God, and He loves His Father. He loves God, and He wanted to do everything that He could to obey God and to work that plan out perfectly. But, God, but Jesus also loves people, and He loves us, and He wanted to see us saved from sin. And for Him to be able to work out God's plan perfectly, He had to come down to earth, and He had to become human. And when he did that, he was able to go through and die on the cross and to take our punishment, and he was able to perfectly obey God's plan in that area. So keep that, keep that in mind, our big picture question, um, the next few weeks, and, and start to try to memorize it. So why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human to obey his Father's plan and to rescue sinners. All right? And... If some of y'all know, back in Jesus' time in the first century, we've been studying a lot about prophets before we kind of got stuck at home. And um, but there were some people that were called rabbis. All right, and what who rabbis were is they were people that were given that title, um, and they were well respected if they knew Moses' law. So they knew the Moses' law and the scriptures really, really well. They were really smart. And they would teach people about it um, by talking to them, by giving speeches, or by writing it down. All right, And they would have, a lot of the Jews would come to them, and they would want to learn these scriptures and go that route, and they would follow them around, and they would be the rabbi's disciples. Okay, And those who were able to pick it up and do real well would follow these rabbis everywhere. They'd go everywhere they went, and they would learn from them and study them. And then the ones who didn't kind of make it, they would go back home and they would pick up a trade, like being a fisherman or a carpenter and things like that, all right? So the people would come to the rabbis and try to be good enough to learn from them. But what's interesting, we're going to talk about, and you're going to learn about it today when we talk about this lesson, is how Jesus chose his disciples, all right? Instead of sitting back and waiting and letting them come to him, he went to them, all right? He chose them. And it was a little bit unusual from the other, the way the rabbis worked. So he would go out and he found some that were fishing, that were working on nets, some that were tax collectors. And we're going to get into that today as we study this, this lesson. Now, 
one thing I'm going to work on maybe for next week is to be able to have a video up where we can see it. But since we don't have our normal video time today, I'm just going to read through the lesson. All right. And parents, if you're there or you want to get into it a little bit later too, our lesson today is going to come from Matthew 4 and Matthew 9, as well as Mark 1 through 3 and Luke 5 through 6. All right. So <clears throat> let's, let's just be quiet for a minute and let's pay attention. All right. So Jesus's ministry had begun. He traveled around preaching about God and telling people to turn away from their sins. People started talking about Jesus and the things he was teaching. They were interested in what Jesus had to say. So large crowds followed Jesus around and listened to him teach. And one day, Jesus was walking along the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew. Peter and Andrew were fishermen. Jesus called out to them, Follow me, and I will teach you to fish for people. And right away, Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and followed Jesus. Later, he saw two more brothers, and their names were James and John. They were in a boat fixing nets with their father. Jesus called out to them, and right away they got up, left their father and their boat, and they followed Jesus. Jesus went on and saw a man named Matthew, who was also called Levi. And Matthew was sitting at the tax office. Matthew was a tax collector. Many people didn't like tax collectors because tax collectors were unfair. Jesus called out to him, follow me. So Matthew got up, left everything behind, and followed Jesus. Matthew had a big feast for Jesus at his house, and many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with Jesus and his disciples. The religious leaders saw this, and they didn't think Jesus should be friends with people who did wrong things. They complained to the disciples, Why does your teacher eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Well, Jesus heard the religious leaders and he said, People who, do, who, do healthy, people who are healthy don't need a doctor, but people who are sick do. I did not come to invite good people. I came to invite sinners to turn back to God. Later, Jesus gathered his followers together and chose 12 of them to be his disciples. Jesus' apostles would work closely with Jesus and would go out and tell others about him. These are the men Jesus chose, Simon, who was called Peter, Simon's brother Andrew, James and John, who were called the Sons of Thunder, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot. All right, so what's amazing to me about this story is when you find these men who were just out doing their normal routine, their normal jobs, they're kind of set in their ways, they've been doing it for a long, long time, and just when Jesus came up and called them, they dropped everything. Everything they were doing, everything they had, everything they had known, they turned away from who they were, and they followed Jesus, okay? The fishermen walked away from their boats. The tax collectors walked away from their tax booth. And they seemed to know that what they were giving up was nothing compared to what they would gain by following Jesus, all right? Now, if you notice in the story today, too, it talked about how a lot of the religious leaders— um, of the Jews, um, they, they were mad and they were angry, okay? Because, you know, in their mind, they thought, kind of like we talked about on Easter, they thought when the Messiah came, he would be coming to rescue them from the Romans and oppression, and he would be a king, and they would take back all their land, and, and they would be fine and dandy. But what when Jesus came, they kind of thought about that too with how, you know, he would come about with them because they were, they were very proud of themselves and they were very highly educated. And they thought, well, because the Jews thought the more they could do and obey the law and the better they were, all right, the closer they were with God. And Jesus, when he came along, he, he was picking people who weren't just the, the what they thought would be the obvious followers of the Messiah, okay? Um, these were sinners. They were not in, in, the, in the law, and they were not disciples and following around these rabbis. They were out just doing their normal jobs. So 
Uh, but Jesus knew if the people were righteous, that their hearts and actions would line up with God's word, okay, then he wouldn't have needed to come to earth. But people are not righteous, okay? We are sinners, and we need Jesus, and we had to have Jesus to make us right with God. And God's plan required that Jesus come to earth, okay, and he come to earth as a human. So if you remember how that tied back in with our big picture question of, why did Jesus become human? Well, he became human to obey his Father's plan and to rescue sinners, all right? So just as sick people need a doctor, sinners need Jesus. We all need Jesus. And the religious leaders at that time, you can think of them as they were like sick people who didn't believe that they were sick, okay? They didn't think they needed saving. They thought they were perfect and they were doing everything okay, all right? But we know that that's not right, and we all needed Jesus, and we needed um, his redemptive blood to cover us for our sins so that we can be redeemed and have that, have that relationship with God. All right? So we know that Jesus came to earth to show what God is like and to save people from their sins, and we know that this is really great news. And Jesus told his disciples to tell others about him. So just as we talked about and we learned about the 12 disciples that Jesus chose, all right, once you become um, a follower of, of faith and once you accept Jesus into your heart, we become disciples as well. We're supposed to tell other people about him and tell them about all the things that he did and, and what we should be doing and how we should follow Jesus, okay? So everyone in the world needs to hear this good news. Now, that's about all we have for our lesson today. It's a little shorter than normal. Maybe next week we can have our video, but... To wrap up, I want to ask just a couple quick questions to see if you were, could pick up and who remembers what uh, from our lesson today, okay? So just a little bit longer. We're almost done, but let me ask you this. What did Jesus say he would teach his disciples to do? Who remembers that from the lesson? What did Jesus uh, say that he was going to teach his disciples to do? All right. Fish for people. Remember how he told them he was going to make them fishers of men? All right, so he was going to teach them how to fish for people rather than for fish. All right. Second question. What were some things that Jesus' disciples left behind to follow him? Now, this one has a few different answers, but see how many you can get or remember. What were some things that Jesus' disciples leave behind to follow him? All right. Some were nets and boats. They left their family. They left their jobs. You know, they left their everyday routines behind to follow Jesus. All right, we'll just do one more question today, okay? With whom did Jesus eat and spend his time? Who remembers from our story today? Who was he meeting with? Who was he eating with? And if you remember, a lot of the religious leaders got really mad about it. Uh-huh. Sinners and tax collectors, all right? So hopefully you got all those right, and think about that, and we'll be back together again. This, If we don't get back together at church, we'll probably be doing this again next week. So I hope you enjoyed it. You can look back over it and talk about it and learn more about this lesson, and um, look forward to seeing everyone again soon.